Hi, how are you? And welcome to another podcast by George. Well, I've mentioned that I'm having so much fun with these podcasts. Every day it seems like it's another thrill, and this is a big one for me. I want to set the scene for you a little bit. Going back to my broadcasting days, I interviewed uh, Wayne Gretzky. I interviewed uh, Muhammad Ali. Uh, I interviewed Robert Redford. I mean, those guys are giants in their own particular categories, big and big in my world. And uh, this uh, guest is uh, big on the music side of things. This is my go-to guy, my go-to band. This is Todd Park Moore from Big Head Todd and the Monsters. How you doing, Todd? Hello, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> We're doing all right out here. We've got a little phone latency, but the connection sounds pretty good. You guys are always moving around. Are you on the road right now? Where are you at? Uh, I'm in Colorado now. We're uh, heading the road in November. Oh, my God. So uh, you, From November to March. I actually caught you at home? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, to kind of explain how I got to you, and I like telling this story, back in the, uh, I don't know, early 90s, this buddy of mine came by with a CD and said, you got to check this out. And my wife and I sat down on the living room couch and played uh, the Sister Sweetly album. And uh, when it was, by the time it was over with, she was weeping. <laughs> That's how much she liked it. I mean, it was a, a big deal for us. And I've seen you guys, uh, you know, from our home base here, obviously, in the great Midwest. But I've uh, we've traveled to uh, Minneapolis, Chicago, all the way down to uh, Little Rock, Omaha, Denver, of course, the big Red Rock shows. And probably uh, something that uh, we'll never forget, one of those uh, vacations that you guys are so famous for. We went out and... Uh, did the uh, uh, Hawaii uh, show with you early on when you first started those. So um, this just couldn't be a bigger moment for me. I hope I hope I don't blow it here for the, for the podcast. Well, I wanted to kind of uh, jump into uh, the, the present times a little bit before we look back or bounce around the uh, time zones here, Todd. And uh, I've been thinking of you for the past, you know, month or so. Maybe it's been longer than that now even with the... Uh, death of Aretha. I mean, I mean, that was huge. And I know, I remember you saying that she was a huge influence on you. You've been a huge fan. What did Aretha Franklin mean to you? Uh, one of my favorite albums is Aretha Franklin live at the Fillmore West. Um, she had incredible songwriters, um, a great sound. Obviously her voice is angelic. Um, it's genre creating and, uh, uh, we lost a lot of great musicians over the last couple of years. Um, but, but she's definitely one of the bigger ones for me. No, oh, absolutely. And I, uh, remember sitting in an airport coming out to see you guys for the Red Rock show and, uh, waiting in the area there, uh, Hazel Miller and Hazel knew Aretha back in the day, right? Did you ever hear that story? I did not hear that story, but it wouldn't surprise me. I, I think I'd, I'd heard that they crossed paths a couple times. Yeah. And, uh, and everybody just loved Aretha. And of course, we're still kind of all grief stricken by that one, but, one of the best things about this business and you guys doing the kind of music that you do, you've spent uh, quite a bit of time around some uh, real greats. And now I'm going to kind of talk about Big, Big Head Todd Blues Club Band and uh, the greats that I think of in the blues category that you became uh, great friends with. Uh, Honey Boy Edwards and, and Hubert Sumlin. You got to know those guys pretty well, didn't you? Pretty well, yeah. They uh, were on a bus with us for a couple of months and they don't sleep. Old people don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and so they had a lot of great stories to tell. I'm getting there. I, I know exactly what that's like. I I tell everybody that, uh, you know, Buddy Guy's out uh, doing his shows now, and I tell everybody, you got to go see Buddy because he's, the you know, one of the last living connections to um, Muddy Waters and, and that uh, Chicago sound and, and those guys. But Honey Boy and, and or Hubert, or those guys went back to, to Robert Johnson. Yeah, Honey Boy was a friend of Robert Johnson's, and he was considered at the time to be the last living link to that era of blues music. Um, of course, he's he's passed away now, but um, it was a thrill to be able to uh, have a guy like him in our band. Yeah, and then there was the the album and that big show that you did back in, uh, I think it was 2011 with those guys. Can you talk a little, that was in Chicago, right? Uh, it was a whole tour. Uh, that was Chicago was one show of that tour. Um, and then, so that was a, a Robert Johnson commemorative tour. Uh, and then since then we did, I think two, two falls ago, uh, Willie Dixon tour with, uh, Muddy Waters' son. Yeah. Um, 
Mud Morganfield and uh, Ronnie Baker Brooks and Billy Branch. So we had an incredible cast for that blues. I mean, both the blues club projects are coming out uh, this for this holiday season, so you'll be able to get those on DVD and watch them. Oh, nice. Well, I'll have them because I've got just about everything, including uh, the new album. I was uh, surprised. I don't know. It makes me feel a little old. It must make you feel really old. The, uh, the new album, is, is that your 11th album? Mm, it sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> right. New World Rise of Rising. And uh, my question for you on that, I want to play a couple of, or sample a couple of songs off of that. But I uh, I think about uh, New World Rising and the uh, the lyrics to that song, and I think, well, that's really fitting. I mean, that's spot on. Todd must have been really thinking about where we're at when uh, he wrote that uh, that song. But the truth of the matter is that was written before the current administration and the uh current political environment i think was that written in uh, back in 2016 before all of this started yeah well the the basics of that song came from a charlie Patton recording of a gospel song called um, jesus is my dying bed maker <laughs> and uh uh i i just wrote some, some newer lyrics for it that, that i'd had hanging around and uh so that's that's how that song came to pass here, I want to give just a little spin of that, a little flavor. We'll sample some of these songs. We won't play them all the way through, but I, I just want to give people an idea for some of the new tunes on, on the album. So this is a New World Horizon. That's off the most recent effort from Big Head Todd and the Monsters, uh, fronted by Todd Park Moore, and then uh, our buddies, or at least they feel like buddies. I mean, when you go and see these bands uh, so much and get a connection with them, uh, you know, they're like part of the family. Brian Nevins on 
on the drums, Rob Squires playing bass, and Jeremy Lawton, who uh, uh, it, it cracks me up. They still kind of refer to him as the uh, new guy, but he's not the new guy anymore. He's, he's been around a long time. He's been with you 10 years at least, hasn't he, Todd? Maybe longer? No, I think 15. Yeah. 15, 16. You know, your band, The Longevity, is, is an interesting story uh, in itself. The other thing that's interesting, and I don't know if you think about this very much, but uh, unlike the bands back in the day that had a very narrow demographic and audience of, of uh, you know, select, you could almost, you know, define them. You guys have fans, very young fans, and you've got people that are approaching 60, 70 years old, including, <laughs> well, I don't want to talk about me, but people that are that are in that age category. Uh, are you guys cognizant of that, uh, the the wide sampling of fans that you have, or you just put it out there and let anybody pick up on it that wants to? Um, right now, it's an exciting time for us because of that. I mean, obviously, uh, we were a college band in the 90s, so people who were fans of ours then are now <clears throat> a little bit older, and they have kids, and they're bringing their kids to our show. So we're starting to see a lot more young people interested in the group as well, and uh I love I love the fact that we're a family band. Yeah, and the I don't know if you'd call it science, but the science of this band is kind of interesting. I I, I want you just to briefly mention how you got started, because uh, mostly because my wife loves that stuff. She she loves to hear how bands get their start. But then uh, Big Head Todd and the Monsters was very interesting because you were one of the first guys, one of the first bands out there to recognize the value of the live performance circuit as opposed to selling records, trying to get people to buy CDs and that type of thing. You guys kind of started all of that by by uh, giving away an album. Now, it, it's been repeated. Other people are doing it too. But, uh, you know, how did you get that, uh, you know, like flash of marketing brilliance? What came to that recognition? Well, it, it's more just staying alive. I think it's more survival than anything else. You know, when uh albums became cds and then cds became the internet so uh, the mediums have changed a lot how people listen to music has changed and uh how it's valued has changed and but the the basics for us is playing music for people so <laughs> that's the same uh but we just try to find different ways to 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 accent that i guess and to get our music to people and you guys all joined up or met, with the exception of Jeremy. Now, I know that he came on from, from somewhere else, but you guys were like uh, school buddies, right? I mean, you started in high school? Yeah, Rob and Brian and I met in Columbine High School. And then went on to the University of Colorado and did music there and then dropped out to hit the road. Is that yeah, <laughs> an I mean, accurate analogy? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You ever going back, you going to pick up accurate. that degree or are you going to pick up your degree on the road? My daddy said I would never do that, and he was right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I managed to get a degree, right. but the day that I got one, I said, I don't care what they pay me or what they want me to do. I'm never going to get a master's or <laughs> take any further education. I, I I, was a student, but not exactly a great one, so I hear that. Well, let's pick up another uh, tune off the new album, and I've been wearing this thing out. I mean, I really uh, – this is – I've told people that – um there's 10 songs on this, including the Hendrix cover, Room Full of Mirrors, which is outstanding. And it, uh, it's kind of a almost a B-side or something. A lot of people aren't familiar with that particular tune, so it's great. But there's 10 songs uh, on this new release, and uh, they're all outstanding. I mean, there isn't... Sometimes there'll be a clunker or two on anybody's album. Sometimes, like the Rolling Stones come out with a... When they were making uh, new albums, and the first three or four tunes would be great, I thought. And then the rest of them, eh, not so much. I love every one of these, and, and including one of the uh, songs that uh, was one of the first ones out. Uh, I think it, they refer to this as the single, although I don't know how they determine that. This is called Damaged One. Let's, let's check out a little of this.
damaged one from New World Horizon, the uh, most recent effort from Big Head Todd and the Monsters. And Todd, that that seems like a pretty personal song. That's kind of interpersonal. Uh, damaged one. Uh, was that a kind of a rocky period for you? Life is rocky. Yeah. It's all rocky. <laughs> it's about everybody. It's not just about me. I'm not the only one who's in this, in this predicament. You are too. Yeah, I have been, believe me. Right? And, oh, absolutely. <laughs> and that, that's why I love these songs. I mean, they, they speak to your heart. Uh, the, the lyricism is great. The music is great. Uh, and that's just another example off of this uh, most recent effort. And I like this album, and I've been telling people this since it came out in 2017. I, I like this as well as anything you've ever done. I would put this up there with Sister Sweetly and Stratagem, the uh, the old albums, and uh, you know Riviera is a lot of everybody loves that. But um, I would I would put that right up there, uh, right up there with it. You guys are not uh, becoming jaded. I mean, this songwriting is still strong, and the uh, the music is great, and you apparently are becoming uh, quite adept at producing because uh, you basically produce this, right? Yeah, it's. I think it's more of a confidence thing. But yeah, we're uh, becoming better at at producing. Um, you know, I've produced a, a couple of our albums over the years, but but we've kind of hit our stride now. I think we we really understand what what it is we want to do with music, and um, we know how to do it, how to put the thing together. So uh, it's really a joy. Agreed. Well, the, you know, the subtitle for this podcast by George is News, Views, and Blues. And so I, I, I've got to, I want to, I want to pick up another song uh, off of the release and ask it, and because this is a perfect example of, of what I tell folks about the blues. And, and Todd does traditional blues. He uses, a, well, what is it, Mississippi Minis guitar. And I mean, you do the the resonator yeah, stuff and yeah memphis yeah memphis many there you go i mean it can't be any more traditional than that but personally i like kind of the blues rock thing i like the blues when you take it and you kind of maybe distort it electrify it amplify it i don't know what you call it and the the one song that really fits the bill for that this i love this song is long coal train tell us about that and and how you you take a standard blues kind of approach and then you do something to it uh, for a song like this yeah well that song is as a blues lyric uh, more than uh melody it's a bluesy melody but really the lyric is what makes it blues and uh a lot of blues is what they call double entendre uh you know it's it's suggesting something with a metaphor and my metaphor is long coal train my baby's a long coal train, and uh, it's actually about my baby, literally, <laughs> the two, 21-month-year-old baby who's long. Uh, I had no <laughs> idea. She cries a lot. I thought so it was. I thought it was about a long-legged woman. So <laughs> that's how you can get the wrong idea about, about the. Whatever you want it to be. <laughs> well, that's what it's for me. You know. And that's funny because I always tell people the story about uh, Bob Dylan, and maybe you've seen that part of one of his interviews, too. People are always asking him, what's this song mean? What's this song mean? And he'll, he'll look at him and he'll say, well, what's it mean to you? And the guy will scratch his head and say, well, I, it kind of means this to me. And you'll look, that's it. You got it. <laughs> that's what this song is about. Yeah. All right, let's, let's listen to Long Cold Train. Long cold train, but she knows she 
Train. And man, is that some hot blues. I love that stuff. Electrified blues, courtesy of Big Head Todd and the Monsters off of their most recent effort, New World Horizon. If you haven't got a copy of this, I would recommend picking it up or, you know, checking it out on one of the streaming services. Or better yet, go see this stuff performed live because that's kind of the idea behind this. Uh, you know, I think Todd does these songs uh, with the idea that uh, it's just going to prime the pump for the live shows for people to come out. And, and check these guys out. So, well, I just want to say uh, to, to wind this uh, show uh, up and to um, let you go on your way, Todd, I want to, again, thank you for being a big part, a huge part of my life. And we've got a contingent here in this area of, of, of fans also. And I, I know it may not always occur to you guys as you move around the country or whatever, but we're following you and we're thinking of you. And we just uh, love this music and we always will. So, We'll look for those uh, DVD releases that are coming out. Is that is that what we're going to see here next? And it'll be a while before we see another compilation of music uh, like the most recent CD. Uh, well, not exactly. Um, we're we're starting November first. We're going to be um, releasing a song a month, a new song a month, uh, and a video. So you can just keep an eye on our facebook and you know social type things youtube uh for monthly releases from the band and uh we're just gonna kind of enjoy working that way for a while we'll see how it goes uh, that's great we'll uh also post some stuff on my website as they come out to try to keep people reminded because this is it this is the guy this is the right. band for me this <laughs> this is what it's all about big head todd and the monsters and uh thanks so much again and I, I always ask this, I, do you think maybe uh, we could circle back and do another interview with you maybe in six months, a year, or something like that? We don't want to wear it out, but uh, this, sure. is, uh, yeah, this has been great. I really appreciate that. Todd Park Moore from Big Head Todd and the Monsters, and this has been another podcast by George. <laughs>